What's up guys, it's Nick here at Fantasy Forge Miniatures and today I'm gonna be making a Halloween build. Now I love Halloween, and it's coming up, so I was like, what can I build? Because there's so many options. And then my favorite movie popped into mine and it's Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. And there's uh, this, this hilarious vicar that lives at this church that's in a cemetery and they really lean into the creepy vibe of you know him walking through the gravestones in the mist at night. And I was like, that's perfect. Cemetery Chapel. So that's exactly what we built. And I think it turned out really great. Now this doesn't have to be a cemetery chapel. It could be, you know, the entrance to a crypt or maybe an armory, but I think it works best as a cemetery chapel. So let's get crafting this thing. All right, so we're gonna start off the chapel build with a pile of bricks. Now, if you're wondering how I made these, I've got an entire YouTube tutorial on how to make a pile of these, so go check it out. Uh, so we're just gonna glue, uh, you know, two and two together and then double them up. And this is what we're gonna use for the base level of the chapel. And uh, once we got enough of these glued together, we're gonna lay out kind of like a floor plan to see, you know, how big and the size and shape that we want for the chapel. You can grab a mini if you want kind of a reference of, of how big to make it. So once we got that, we're gonna start gluing it all together and I'm just laying hot glue down like mortar and then stacking the bricks up on top of that. Now I'm not gluing end to end anymore because this is just a lot faster and it's still really secure. You're welcome to do so, but this is a great way to really build up your building uh, really quickly. And I use this technique for pretty much all uh, of the buildings I make with bricks. So I find this is a really fast and effective method. Now as you build the walls up, you can have a little mini there that you can use as reference to see how high you wanna make your walls before you start uh, putting the gables on. Now that we have the walls at the height that we want, I'm going to start tapering the build upwards uh, to make the gables of the chapel. Now at first I went for uh, you know half a brick smaller on each level to get a very even uh, peak, but I wanted, I wanted the roof to be steeper, so I went back here and I added some more bricks um, just onto the edge. Uh, of each of the gables here just so that I had a little bit more area to work with and it makes the gables a little bit taller for this next part where we're gonna cut uh, the excess off so we have a nice uh, straight uh, roof line. So I'm just lining up with the edge of the wall there and to the center of the peak and then I'm just cutting off that extra so that we can get a nice tall chapel peak. So now that that's done we're going to cut some um, foam core um, for the roof so I'm just measuring the uh, width of the roof there and then just cutting a piece of, of foam core there and uh, this is you can just get this stuff at the dollar store um, and now uh, I, I forgot that I wanted to add kind of like these I don't know what you call them pillars onto the edge uh, of the gables for uh, what we're gonna have our gargoyles on the end so uh, I'm just going back and pulling off some uh, of the bricks there and we're going to add in some more to kind of level out and make those little pillars. And that's the great thing about uh, foam and model building is that it's very forgiving. You know, I had forgotten about it. We go back, we add it in and it still looks great. So we're just cutting those off there and you can see we've kind of got those nice little squared areas for the chapel. Now we're going to kind of dry fit the roof on there, make sure it fits nicely. And then I'm just gonna cut an angle at the very top. Um, I've just kind of eyeballed it um, so that when we glue the two pieces of the roof together, uh, they'll, they'll be flush. And then I'm just cutting off the extra uh, angle on the wall so that the roof fits nicely. And now I'm gonna glue the two roof pieces together with those angles that we cut and just keeping them flush on the ground so that they're level and then just squeezing them together to have a nice perfect seam and now because that's such a straight cut on top of the roof there um, I wanted to kind of uh, add a little bit of texture so we're just cutting some of the bricks we have in half 
and then gluing them onto the top as kind of like a gable cap. I don't know if that's a thing, but it is now. And uh, just making sure that top comes to uh, a nice point there. So once we have that, we're gonna start onto the shingle. So here I'm cutting off one inch by one inch block of XPS foam. And I've got the Dungeons by Hand uh, shingle jig here. Uh, go check him out, Dungeons by Hand. He's got some great jigs for the Proxon. So we're just sticking in the foam into the jig, and then we're gonna be running it through the Proxon here, and we're just uh, tracing it out. The wire doesn't cut through the wood, and it makes uh, a perfect, perfect cuts. Uh, of the shapes of the shingles into the foam here. And so we're gonna have this shingle block that we're then going to be able to slice into very thin shingle strips. And this is a great way to mass produce um, really good looking shingles. So go check out Dungeons by Hands jig. So here we've cut a thin slice of shingles and we're just gonna keep doing that, get a, a pile of shingles ready and then we're just gonna glue them onto the roof. But first, I wanted to put kind of like a little bit of an edge cap to the roof. We just, uh, same with those half cut stones. And now you can see here, we're just gluing on the shingles uh, strip by strip, and I'm doing them offset. So every, uh, every shingle row, uh, I offset by half, and since they're all the exact same width, you get this nice staggering uh, pattern with the shingles. So uh, I put a layer on top of the second one, and then uh, on the other. So there you have it. Uh, we stack up the shingles and it looks great. So now we're gonna take a, an old cereal box here and uh, it makes for great cardstock. I'm just cutting off uh, a little strip here and then scoring it there so that I can uh, fold it in half. And then we're gonna use this as kind of like the ridge cap. So like a, a metal ridge cap for the chapel. And so I'm just adding a healthy amount of hot glue so that this sticks well to the shingles here and then just pressing that out on top. Now I'm gonna be making the supports here that we're gonna put around all the sides. So we're just going to be gluing uh, some bricks together into these kind of little piles. And I'm gonna make two of them and I'm gonna take the second and cut it in half. And this is gonna be the, the smaller half of the, of the support on top. And now I'm just kind of shaving them down a little bit, adding a little bit of angle to the very tops of, of each of them. And then I'm gluing the larger half to the smaller half here. And this is going to make our support. So you can see there, um, it's gonna make a nice little support. And we're going to be adding these little bits of shingles uh, to, to each level of the support there. Uh, and then just cutting off the little edges to make it look like the roof tiles. So uh, just gluing those on, again, just out of cereal box lids. And once we have that, we're just going to be making a bunch of these because we're gonna be putting them all the way around. So I just made uh, a, a bunch of them and then we're just gonna start gluing them on to kind of each, starting off with each corner um, so that they look kind of like part of the build there. So we're just pressing on right against the side. Now I have to cut out this little uh, edge piece uh, for the ones that kind of go up against the roof. So you just have to cut out that little notch so that they fit really nicely. So then these other supports here, we kind of had to cut the top off a little bit because they're a little bit shorter. And I'm doing uh, kind of two on each side there. And you can see we've got nice spacing for our windows there and making sure we have room for the door. So now we're gonna be adding our gargoyles. So I 3D printed these. I got a, a free file off of Thingiverse and I'm just gluing them on top of those kind of gable piles there. And you can see, I really like how these, uh, how these turned out. I think they had a lot of character. So now I'm grabbing the Shifting Lands um, arch jig and I'm just tracing out on a little piece of foam here. This is going to be our door. So I just cut that out and then take off the, uh, to the paper there. Now I want stairs going up to the door just a little bit. So I take this little piece of scrap foam, I cut it in half on the Proxon, and then I make one, uh, one top piece a little bit smaller so that it, you know, it, can, it can be the steps up. Now I'm just tracing out some stone lines that I'm gonna wanna carve in here and I'm using my soldering, um, soldering gun to just kind of melt in those uh, stone lines there. And then we're gonna grab uh, some tin foil, add some stone texture, and then a pencil to add in some cracks. And then we're just gonna glue the smaller stones on top of the larger. So now we're gonna trace out the door here that we've made onto the front of our builds and then just gonna straight up cut it right out with, uh, with an X-Acto knife. 
and uh, I made it so that there's one uh, one level of stone so that it stays secure and can hold it and that's the height of the stairs. Now I'm cutting in a little bit of an angle here so that we can uh, add some more detail so it doesn't look just like a hole cut out and then I'm just hot gluing along that very uh, same angled line there with a very thin strip of XPS foam that's just kind of going to bend around to that arch and it's going to add that little bit of uh, you know kind of detailing that's really gonna make the door pop and then I'm gonna go over with a pencil and just add those grout lines so they line up with the build to make it look cohesive now I'm using a hot wire tool here to carve the center of the door and then using the very tip to uh, melt in some wood texture again check out my tutorial on texturing if you want to see exactly uh, all my techniques so we're just penciling in some wood lines there and we're gonna cut some thin long triangles of XPS foam and these are gonna be our hinges so I'm just gluing these onto the door and then I'm gonna take a little ball tool and kind of indent where the bolts would be and it gives a good impression now we're twisting up some wire into some uh, circles that we're gonna use as the handle so I'm just clipping them there to, to make a perfect circle and then attaching them with a, a little uh, little piece of loop wire there and they make great handles so there's the front of our church I think it looks great so now we're gonna be adding in a big window here and this is again by Dungeons by Hand has laser cut these and they're great looking windows we're just gonna trace out just like our door we're gonna carve uh, the piece out uh, and this is where our window is going to just fit right in there. So we're going to just dry fit, make sure that it fits nicely. And then I 3D printed these extra little taller, skinnier windows uh, that we're going to be using along the side of the build. So I'm just laying them down where I want them. And then I'm just going to press them really hard into the foam. It's going to leave an indentation so that I know where I can go in with my smaller X-Acto knife and just carve out the windows and that's just an easier technique uh, than trying to trace out with a pencil. So once we get that out, we're just gonna pop out the center and then again, just dry fit the window to make sure it works. And just like the window and doors, we're just gonna cut a little bit of angle to add some detail um, and we're gonna do the same for the big window as well. Now we're just gonna go same technique as the door and adding that thin strip of uh, XPS foam to add the detailing around the window. And I think this is the first time I've ever done this technique and I really liked it. Um, it was a little finicky, but it added a, a lot of character. So I thought, I thought it, it turned out well. So, and then adding some strips uh, along the edge as well, adding the grout lines. And we're just gonna do this for all of the windows um, and then just going over with some tin foil to add a little bit of texture because when you cut the foam it is a very clean cut with a knife and we just want to rough it up a little bit so um, now we're gonna go back to the roof I'm gonna grab some toothpicks here and I'm just gonna cut half an inch off of the very tip of each end of the toothpick and we're gonna get a bunch of these spikes um, because a lot of these churches have these like spiky ridge lines so um, I thought it was a good look and now I'm just marking out one centimeter along the entire top of the roof. Then we're just going to add some hot glue to the end of the spike. And then we're just going to glue it on to each one of the marks here. And there we go. Now, they're not super secure. You could push them all the way through uh, the cardboard and through the foam if you wanted to be really secure. But I found this worked. And when you added on the... Uh, primer and paint they held better now we're gonna do the same across the ridge lines on the bottom of the roof and then we're gonna add these little uh, pillars that I uh, kind of carved out of foam and then use the hot wire tool to uh, add a little bit of detail and these are gonna be not really like a steeple but just kind of like uh, a little peak cap uh, and then putting a toothpick through it to make it a little bit more secure and then gonna glue the on hose on either end now we're going to put a floor onto the chapel so we're just putting it on top of a piece of foam core and then just tracing out uh, the inside of the chapel onto it and then cutting it out and then we're just going to be placing this uh, inside of the chapel and this is going to act as our floor um, but we need to add some texture so it's not quite flush so that's perfect we can add on our texture here with our half cut stones and I'm just using this to outline uh, kind of like the floor plan here and I'm just using the half cut stones uh, yeah to kind of like box in the floor and then we're going to be adding in a bunch of these 
um, two, like two centimeters by two centimeter squares. Now I could put them all in like this and just have like a regular old squared floor plan, but it's a chapel. I wanted it to add, uh, look a little bit fancier. So what I ended up doing here was uh, turning the squares uh, 45 degrees and then kind of getting this, I don't know, diamond square shape pattern. And it looked just a little bit fancier. And because of all of the, uh, all the bricks were two centimeters by two centimeters, everything lined up perfectly. And so uh, I just ended up gluing them all on. Now you can see here, I've taken these bricks and just put them through my regular stone texturing method of putting them in a, uh, in a bin and shaking them up with some stones. And now you can see here, we've got a great looking uh, floor piece for a chapel. I'm just taking some tin foil here and adding just a little bit of extra stone texture, uh, dry fitting it onto the bottom of the chapel and it fits perfectly. And I think it looks great and it's nice and flush with the stairs. Now I 3D printed out some uh, little pews and a little uh, vigil there. And those are gonna be our uh, cute little interior pieces for the chapel. So now that we've got all that done, we're just going to glue the floor uh, onto the build. And uh, I wanted to add some magnets to the roof so that it could you know, nicely lock into place. So it was kind of just resting there. Um, so all I'm doing is melting out uh, a little uh, hole and then hot gluing in the magnets. Now I'm using a technique here where um, I'm gluing the first uh, magnet in place and then I'm going to be placing a magnet onto each one of the ends and then I'm going to put it back onto the build and I'm going to press in. This is how I get my magnets to line up. I'm going to press in and the magnets are going to leave a nice little indentation like that that I can then melt out with uh, the hot wire and then glue the second magnet into place there and they're going to be perfectly lined up so that your magnets work great and you can even leave them attached like that and then just press them into place so now we're going to start priming so i'm taking some um, mod podge i'm adding some black paint here uh, mixing it all together and this is going to add uh, you know a nice uh, sealant it's going to really firm up the piece so that it's a lot more secure and durable so we're just mixing up the black paint there and we're going to coat the entire thing uh, in the Mod Podge black paint mixture. So now we're going to start painting. If you want to check out uh, how I like to paint stone, I have a video on just all the techniques that I use to paint stone in detail. Um, but I'll give you a, a high level overview here. So I like to call this first, uh, first coat here um, kind of the, the, under, the undertone. Um, so I'm using brown. It's really good to use like kind of like different colors. If you only use like, you know, like uh, grays, uh, grays, whites, and blacks for stone, it's going to look kind of flat. So this uh, brown paint is going to add a lot of depth to the stone. So I'm just going to go in there, randomly paint some stones. And then I'm going to start with what I call the medium, uh, medium highlighting. Uh, it's just some medium gray and we're just dry brushing on, pretty heavy dry brushing uh, to get the, you know, kind of the stone look there. So we're just gonna do the entire piece in this. Uh, and then going back with some more, um, you know, I'm going lighter and lighter with my, my highlighting here to get the right kind of color of stone that I want for the chapel. Now here we're gonna do the roof in this Calypso sky blue. Now this is a little too bright, so I'm gonna be adding in a little bit of uh, the brown paint and that's gonna kind of tone down the blue a little bit. Now we're just going to paint it onto all of the shingles and onto all of the roof and it's gonna get this uh, kind of great, uh, I don't know what it is, like oxidized copper. You can leave comments below to tell me what this actually is, but I've seen it before. And then we're just going in with another lighter highlighting and just kind of going over pretty quickly and then going over for a final highlighting with a white and calypso blue mix, very light to finish off and catch those edges. And then we're just gonna paint the ridge cap black along with the spikes. And then we're gonna give it a wash. You can check out my video on how I made these washes, uh, but we're gonna start applying this wash really liberally um, and it's really handy to have the spray gun because it just goes um, on very easily to um, all the little details. And then we're just gonna take a cloth and kind of wipe off any excess on areas we don't want it to. And then once that's dry, we're just gonna go over with a final highlighting with uh, you know a very light uh, dry brushing. So then we're gonna paint all of the windows with a brushed metal um, to give that kind of like lead uh, stained glass look. We're also just gonna paint the door with uh, you know a brown base coat and then highlighting with some cafe latte and then painting the hardware 
with some uh, metallic, same brushed metal that we're using on the windows so that you know you kind of get some of that continuity. And then we're just going to paint our little interior pieces with some contrast paint. This is a really quick way of just kind of uh, adding some detail and I love how the contrast paints work. So now we're going to glue our windows down and I ran out of parchment paper so it's just going to be on some cellophane and some cardstock but we're going to be doing um, some resin for the stained glass. So I'm pressing down the windows onto the piece so that they'll kind of seal so when we pour the uh, resin in there uh, it will kind of pull in there. So we're going to do equals part resin here um, and we're just going to pour those into individual cups and you know always wearing gloves. We're gonna pour them together and then we're gonna mix them and then we're gonna add in some color dyes here. So I have a light green um, I had some other color greens and yellows, but it turns out that the light green worked really well. We're just going to drop in a couple of those, and then you can add more to get the right color. Maybe you don't want to do green. I kind of thought the green was creepy. And then we're just kind of going to drop the resin into each window pane here, and uh, then you can go over it with a toothpick afterwards or, or whatever you'd like, um, but it's going to nicely pool in there, and uh, this is what's going to make up our windows. So. We're just going over once we've got it all poured with a, uh, a lighter to get out any bubbles. I didn't need to vacuum chamber or pressure pot these because the resin's so thin. So once they dry, the cellophane wasn't a great idea, but it still does come off. Parchment paper works a lot better. Um, so if you're ever doing it, for sure use that. But I think they turned out really well. They've got a little bit of a flange on some of them where they didn't seal properly. So um, all you have to do for that is just grab your knife and uh, just carefully cut off the excess resin. And now it's time to start gluing them into place. So we're just adding some hot glue to the edge of the window and then just uh, pushing them right into, uh, right into the spots where we cut them for. And they're gonna fit really nice and snug in there. We're gonna do that for all the windows and I'm really loving uh, how this turned out. Now I grabbed a little piece of paper and I painted it uh, orange and yellow and this is going to be leaves. I've got this great uh, little punch from Green World Stuff and I just punched out a bunch of leaves because it's fall and I think this would be look really cool. And then I also had this just bag of kind of like moss and, and duff uh, from the dollar store that I thought would make you know great dead vines. And then also from the dollar store this uh, clear tacky glue that uh, I find works, works really well. I put a little bit onto a piece of styrofoam and then started brushing it onto some areas where I thought leaves would collect. And then I'm just gonna grab the tweezers and then just start placing some of those leaves we punched out uh, into the, uh, the areas. And uh, you can put these anywhere where you think that kind of leaves would uh, pile up. And uh, you know, I, I thought maybe some would catch you know on the roofs and the, and the gutters up there. And I think it adds just a really nice kind of like pop of color to the piece and makes it really feel like, uh, you know, fall time and that Halloween. So putting a couple on some window ledges there and I think they're turning out really great. So then I'm just gonna take a little bit of that moss and duff and then I'm just gonna start gluing that like some dead vines. But then I also saw this brush and I thought, hey, this looks like uh, dead tall grass. So we ripped it out and it was glued together so it worked really well. I just kind of pulled the brush apart and then I used these as like, just kind of like some tall dead grass. So I just hot glued that and then put that directly on and I think this turned out really well for kind of an impromptu uh, texturing and detailing. So I put a couple of pieces of those all over, added some more kind of uh, duff to make look like dead vines and put those in some cracks, uh, put a little twig up in the roof. And I really love putting on these kind of details because I feel like it really brings the piece to life when you can add in those uh, little details and I think it turned out great. So now I figured it needed pumpkins. Of course, it's a Halloween build. It needs to have some pumpkins somewhere. So I grabbed some Super Sculpey and uh, a shaping tool and just tried to kind of quickly make some uh, pumpkin looking miniatures there. And I think they turned out pretty good. Uh, we baked them in the oven. Uh, we painted them up and uh, you know we made a couple of those and added them to the scene and I think uh, it really added a nice fall Halloween effect. And so there you have it. There is our finished Halloween cemetery chapel build and I'm really happy with how this turned out. I had a lot of fun putting in all the little extra details 
And I think this is gonna be a lot of fun to put on your table and have some really fun, spooky, creepy D&D encounters with. And that's it guys, that's how you build a cemetery chapel. Now I'd love to see what you guys come up with and hopefully you can use these techniques in all your other builds. If you found this video helpful, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notifications to join the squad or follow me on TikTok. Thanks so much for watching guys, and as always, keep on crafting.